that was actually Miranda Kerr working with her so much. She has that Noni oil that's very famous. It's a beautiful product. I was always putting just two, you know, one or two drops around the cheekbones. So when someone turned their head, they have this beautiful glow there. Welcome to my favorite makeup artist, the glorious Michael Brown. I'm so happy to have you at the beginning of the year, which it's still the beginning of the year, talking yeah. trends and also technology makeup still a lot of people who are listening to this podcast do not actually go and get their makeup done for an event so listening to an expert on this show might be their greatest link and most likely uh, way to bridge the gap between their current knowledge and where they might take it to next so let's start at the very beginning you said that you're um you see the biggest innovation in technology changes in complexion products. Is that correct? Yeah, I think complexion is insane. I mean, I grew up on the days of Estee Lauder double wear. I mean, I was a dancer, so I used to wear it not only for some of my clients, but on stage because it was waterproof, sweat proof, it was full coverage, it didn't move, it was insane. And then, you know, the thought of me using that now on clients, I'm like, oh, my God, that was just heavy, um, not much brightness, uh, very opaque, you know, so it just kind of stuck on and, yeah, it kind of concealed everything. But also these days where we are embracing things like freckles and um, different skin tones and types and textures. So you don't need to have that mask on and that full um, camouflage and I think foundations used to be you know don't you think that those formulas have really transformed because I used to use double wear 25 years ago 20 years ago but I got rematched for double wear last year they had a pop-up in Bondi and I went to it and I got rematched and it was a completely different product it was so flattering and I never wear foundation in full disclosure I hate foundation I <laughs> I, I can't find one that I like. I got yeah. color matched for double wear. It was a, a revelation. And for me, it was such an example of technology, taking something that really worked in the 90s. You mm. know, that look was really full coverage, nothing could Ooh, get past. Like, coverage, you know, like one yeah. one. <laughs> Yeah, but when I got colour match, first of all, the range of colours was infinitely oh. expanded, which I totally appreciated because I didn't need to mix two colours. And secondly, it didn't feel like a mask. I could build it up or wear it sheer. And it was it was such a great new way to experience a foundation that had I stuck to the old version of it, I probably wouldn't have gone near it. So mm. I think the technology has taken even iconic products and updated them so that you do want to use them. Yeah, I mean, there's so many new brands now as well we have to think about and so many makeup artists that I, I love um, have got their brands now. So I'm really attracted to those obviously firsthand. Being a makeup artist myself, I think, well, if they're a celebrity makeup artist doing all these fabulous people, it must be good. But I worked for Long Comp for eight years and one of their famous foundations is Tainted Doll. And yeah. Tainted Doll, when I used it when I was working with Longcom, which is now 12 years ago, um, same, I mean, not not maybe as deep, thick as Double Wear was, but it was very full coverage, very one colour, not much light, semi-matte. You know, it didn't, didn't do much for your skin apart from coverage. The new version, I used it recently and I was like, oh, okay. The slip yeah, on, right. much easier to blend and just more seamless looking and fresh looking, which I think is beautiful as well. So like you said, the cult classics that you might remember the names of, definitely try them again if you've heard of them because they they are updated, obviously, regularly. They have to be. But yeah. there are also such new products and new brands and new things that I love as well. Um, I've always what loved Charlotte Tilbury products, you know, I just love Charlotte Tilbury and her beautiful skin foundation. The one in the tube and it's got the pump on the end. That, it's called Beautiful Skin. I love it because it's not too full coverage. And I do work with some beautiful women like Kate Waterhouse and Jacinta Franklin quite regularly. They're like my regular kind of Sydney girls that I do regularly. Um, and they've got, they're lucky. They've got such beautiful skin. The thought of covering it up makes me feel sad. So I love beautiful skin because of that fact that it looks like their actual skin, just a little bit more evened out and more glowy. And, you know, there's also brands like Enco Beauty now, which I think, is, is an amazing brand in so many ways because 
you know, foundations can be expensive. Complexion is expensive, but complexion is also your be all and end all for the whole makeup look. It is really the base of your face. So, you know, we're not expecting people to go out and buy Chanel's and YSL's and SA Lauders and things that are a little bit pricier. If you can afford it, great. But I love that there's also affordable options now so everyone can get the chance to have that beautiful skin they deserve. But I'm more actually not a coverage person. I really like skin to look like skin. I would rather use tiny bit of foundation and more concealer in areas that I feel I need it, like under the eyes or pigmentation. I hate that mask look and I hate the same coverage and depth of coverage from forehead to chin and cheek to hairline. I think use it in different areas. So I love that as well rather than having a mask. And you and I have talked about this a lot and you taught me this, um, is that priming will just completely transform yeah. what the end result is going to be. So I'd love you to kind of talk us through your priming technique and steps. And it, please feel free to mention any products that you think are key. Because I remember last time we spoke, you were huge on using oil as a, oh, as yes. a way to prep the skin. Well, yes, I um that was actually Miranda Kerr working with her so much. She has that Noni oil that's very famous and um, it's a it's a beautiful product rather than being a dense oil. It absorbs quickly. It doesn't leave too much residue. But what I was doing with that at the time a lot, not necessarily using it on the whole face before a makeup because it might be too much for some people, especially around the T-zone, but I was always putting just two, you know, one or two drops around the cheekbone. So when someone turn their head they have this beautiful glow there and because you put it on before the foundation the foundation goes over the top or in some cases concealer it kind of was making the foundation and concealer look more transparent so even if you were using a full coverage it didn't look full coverage because the glow was coming through and the minute you have glow coming through it looks like your own skin rather than being too matte and opaque so i do sometimes do that especially for mature uh, clients that I may work with and depending on the lighting they're in or situation they're in like if it's obviously a very very humid day probably not uh, mm -hmm. but for different situations I still do that technique amazingly but what I love now is uh, primers are also color correct and right. the yeah. word of blurring I mean you've, you've heard of the blur everyone loves the blur there's foundations now that have blurring filters and powders in them Lady Gaga's foundation. I know you can't get that here, but I've tried that amazing makeup by Mario's foundation, Kat Von D's foundation. They're all got these blurring technique, uh, blurring, um, uh, not technique, mm -hmm. blurring uh, te technology in it that kind of filters the face like a Paris filter. So I love that. So makeup forever, actually, because I was a Smashbox boy. You know, Smashbox is prime. It's, it's been around for a long time, it's very iconic. They've now got Pamela Anderson as their face because it's so iconic. Um, that was my favourite because it did blur the skin. But now I'm loving makeup forever. They've got like eight primers. Now that's a lot. I'm not saying you've got to buy eight primers, but there's an orange undertone. So if someone's got really pigmentation and darker areas in their skin, the orange will balance that out or even really dark circles as well. Um, the green ones for redness and hyper red skin, sensitive skin. I actually use the yellow a lot. The yellow says dullness, right, anti-dullness, so it's supposed to yeah. brighten your skin. I find out of all the primers, even the greens and the oranges and stuff, if you just use the yellow one, it kind of, for me as a makeup artist, I don't want to carry 10,000 things in my kit. It gets too heavy. The yellow pretty much does every skin tone for me because the yellow will still neutralise some red. It will neutralise some orange. It kind of just evens the skin. I love how bright the skin looks with the yellow primer. Two products that I, I think are great because I don't like foundation on the primer side. One is the Embryolisse. Um, oh. It's in a pink. Uh, it's a face blush. Have you ever used that? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I've seen that. It's yes. amazing. First of all, it's like skin cell. Uh, it's skin care. So it's infused with rose petal stem cell technology. It smells like that. heaven and it's so counterintuitive because it's this big pink, pink pot and when you put it on your skin it is like a shot of <laughs> barocca for the skin it does not matter what you did the night before it does not matter what's going on in any shape or form you suddenly look quirky and fresh that's one product that I, I love like I recommend it to everyone 
And the other one, speaking of the color correction that you were talking about, is a Steeler one, which has got multiple colors in it. Have you seen that one? I haven't seen that one. Is it kind of a swirly? Okay. Oh, like, like one of those ones, you know, one of those. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I've seen them before, but not Steeler. Yeah. And that thing seems to like, particularly if I've had any pigmentation come up or discoloration, that thing is just magic. And I just mix it with like a glowy kind of product, like a Fenty or the uh, Charlotte Tilbury. Um, like the magic um, filter. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I, I just mix that together and put on my face instead of foundation. And it, it's really good because A, it color corrects and B, it gives me the glow. Is that is that okay? Like, Am I doing right? The color correct now. Like I think the primers I use in the past were also very hydrating and moisture giving and moisture giving. But to be honest, I'm very full on with my skin prep. And you probably remember doing your makeup sometimes. Like I don't just slap on the foundation. There's a essence that goes on. There's you know um, the 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 quarterly beauty elixir. I do that every makeup I do. I spray that on the mist because it refreshes. Sitting on my desk. The one that's the one that's I just the love one. It for makeup um and i and, and i think i'm so full on with my skincare i don't need a primer that is just giving hydration it's great if you're really dry but i prefer using primers now that lift the skin tone so i also use a pink primer or a yellow um pink and yellow i use a lot just to really get that skin clarity and really make it bright and the foundation goes on smoothly I can't stand being shiny, so I I personally use like a mattifying blurring primer. So I blur yeah. all the forehead and blur all around here so pores and lines look a bit smoother. And I love the blurring technology that so many brands have embraced. I think it's so beautiful for pores. So what I sometimes do is like this morning on one model, she had a little bit of discoloration, just looked a little bit flat when she first walked in, had an olive skin tone. Not too yeah. dark, but a bit olive. And I thought, mm, I'm going to use the pink. So I used the pink primer all over, really lifted her skin and brightened it. But because she had large pores there, the blur one just in those areas and then foundation over the top, magic. So that sounds like a lot, but I'm only using it in little small concentrated areas. So the product still lasts for ages. But if you want that real clarity skin, you do have to use just – one or two products rather than one. It's hard to say one does everything these days. I mean, you yeah. can't put it all together. Like your Scylla one is mixing two or three things together. But as an artist, I want everything to be like, wow, you know, and that was my little magic this morning. I loved it. I definitely need to add glow into everything. Like I, you know, the by Terry um, CC or BB, Yes. The highlighters. I mix that into just about everything. I mix that into my sunscreen if I don't want to wear anything. I um, There's a really great Clinique primer, which has got a, a highlight through it. That's got oh, yeah. some, it's got some blurring technology and it's also got um, like no, a, a, a bit of an iridescence to it. Yeah. I mean, I'm funny about so many, so many products for me have, there's glow and then there's like that little bit of shimmer and I'm not. No shimmer, yeah, I'm just not. glow. <laughs> Even sometimes no. the drunk elephant ones, I love them for so many different reasons, but sometimes it's a bit much like on, like I, I only use it on actual the highlights of the face. I would never mix it into an into a foundation. Oh. The whole face is glowy. And because I'm doing a lot, like my, my work these days is a lot of people getting photographed on television red carpets, flash photography. So if they're kind of shimmery and not, it's a bad word really, just really highlighted all over, it doesn't yeah. really give the highlight and shade effect of the face. So I'd rather keep all these areas quite matte, T-zone quite matte and almost a little bit flat. But that area and through the centre here and, the you know, things like that, really glowy. Um, you know what I'm loving at the moment? I know it's bougie. I've been told off before because I'm given so much I forget about the I mean, We talk bougie on this show all the time. Go go right ahead. I Let's featured a $2,500 La Prairie skin mask on my Instagram and I had so many people message me in an excited, not in a condescending. It was like, wow, how exciting. Where can I get it? So go nuts. Okay. So, mission, but yeah, Westman Atelier, um, Gucci Westman's brand, who actually trained me at Longcom in Paris years ago, which is hilarious. And I, uh, we had a lunch with her last year, and I was so inspired with her products. I love her contouring sticks, her highlights, but she has these complexion drops. Have you tried the complexion drops? 
No, it's but I tried it pronta. It was a little package like that, and you shake it up. It's very, very liquidy. So you can use it for someone like you that doesn't like foundation. You could get your um, tone and she just use that it's so thin that you don't feel like you're wearing foundation at all, but it's super glowy. Or someone like me, I use it before foundation to get extra glow. But yeah, the, um, West Mediterranean Atelier complexion drops and she just launched some bronzing ones for the first time uh, recently. But I love those because they're like just that spotlight, beautiful, radiant skin, either by itself or with, mixed or before foundation. I love it. MBR I turned 50 last month, as you know, and yeah. um, I was in Brisbane at the time on the day of my birthday, staying at the Calar with my best friend and Lily. And I thought I'd, I'll go get my makeup done. I'll pick up a few things at Mecca. And the makeup artist was wonderful. She was so fun. We had such a great time. And she, I'm so late to the party. You're going to laugh at me. But, oh, my God, the joy that I have been getting from the hourglass palette you know the oh, one that's yeah. the, what, what's that thing called where it's kind of like a soft prisms? light they're like prisms yes they're like these three um yeah diffu light diffusing prisms yeah and, and it's like different shades bronze. in the mix yeah yes. mine's got a bronze one a champagne one and a glowy golden one and i have never had like so many compliments as when i wear this so mm. i i literally but I have to stop myself because I can go a little bit down the path of a light bulb. Just go I just go. Yeah, like that's a thing because I, I mean I I love that palette too. I have one, um, and that's a thing because it does have that reflect in it. You yes. just have to be careful. And and to be honest, anything powdery. That's why I tend to prefer um, anything that's got a creaminess to it. Like Miranda Kerr has, she doesn't do any makeup, which I think she should, but um, her Cora brand has the little pot. Yes. Yep, it, yep, yep, yep. I've used I can't remember the name now, but it's like a like, like a skin luminizer. I think it's called skin luminizer rose quartz. Rose because quartz, rose yeah. quartz is a big part of her brand and her kind of um, ethos. But yeah, it's like actual real rose quartz crushed down into a luminizer. I use that a lot because it's very. Um, it still highlights the skin, but looks like glass skin rather than like shiny disco-y skin. Uh, the Westman Atelier one as well, beautiful. But I'm going to get that now that you've have shimmers in the middle. You've got to be careful. That's all. Yeah. Do you know another thing that I have observed you do in makeup, and I think it's very glow giving, beautiful without messing around with glitter bombs, is and I I think it was actually the last time we were together when uh, Miranda Kerr visited and you had done her makeup and she had quite a clean girl aesthetic on her face, but you had a beautiful glossy lip, quite a neutral pink. It was Fenty. Fenty, um, yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, it was, it was a, a whatever bomb, gloss bomb gloss on her pink. lip. But the gloss lifted her whole face and I hadn't worn lip gloss in like a thousand years when I saw you do that. And I thought, oh, my God, lip gloss makes such a difference to bringing light and, like, youth to to the face. And I went and got the one that you told me to. Um, and it definitely, definitely is a nice way to play with um, light and texture to the face. I think it, it was a really nice little trick. Just how you use it, like I don't like gloss all over the lip. Like so I, yeah. I quite, you know, and I'm known to just slightly, very slightly overline the lip of the lip because I think everyone needs a bit of that Cupid's bow and just a nice outline. And if you shade in, like I actually use the Makeup Forever Artist Pencils. I don't know if you've heard of them. They're, like, they're called these Artist Pencils because you can use them as a contour, eyeliner, lip liner they're the old school sharpened ones i kind of like when you sharpen them they're a bit easier than those new waxy ones um and i and i line the whole lip smudge it in but leave a gap in the middle yeah i only like glosses that have pigment through it like that gloss bomb from fenty they're quite um creamy and thick and there's also a gloss bomb cream and and, and that's what i was using so because it's a gloss uh, gloss bomb cream it's got pigment through it, like the old Juicy Tubes or the Napoleon one years ago that was so popular. They were just thin 
and just go to shine. But because of the colour involved, I love that. Yeah. So I'm going to use it just in the centre. Like I don't gloss the whole outline, the whole lip. I keep just the pencil, smudge a little bit, keep the middle of the lip totally free of any colour, gloss in the centre only. And that kind of tends to open up the look, kind of that ombre effect to the lip, you know, like slightly darker on the outer side, slightly brighter in the middle. You get that real pout and I love that effect on lips as well. You also taught me, um, I was so, so scared of nude lips. I'd oh, always yeah. worn colour and um, you taught me how to do a really, really pretty nude lip, which was really great on me. And it was the Burberry Nude Lip Pencil. Oh, and yeah. then I want to say it was a Huda Beauty, um, a, a really peachy kind of colour. Remember um, you were using it on Jacinta a lot and you said, play with this, have a go at this. That and that was my kit for years. It's now run out and I haven't got any more. But, yes, I, I, I remember that colour specifically. It was beautiful. But I still buy it because you put me onto it. Yeah, it was I very peachy. I lip pencil and I still, that Burberry lip pencil, the nude one, is so beautiful and it is, you know, you do have to sharpen it, which I like. It's such a great nude. And then I bought the Huda Lip. Um, it's like a creamy, longer-lasting lip yeah, I can't, uh, I can't remember the look, look, but I remember the look. It's in a peach. Let's yeah. use it, everyone. <laughs> you taught me something really smart, and you said you have to have a darker lip liner underneath, otherwise you're going to look dead. So it's really important to make sure that you use the lip liner to give you the depth, yeah. and then you can play around with the different nudes. Yeah, and I'm, I'm that. literally drawn to pinky, peachy nudes, like the real Kim K kind of you know, really dead nude. I call it dead nude, which is not that good, but like that real, um, it's just nude. There's no colour in it. I find yeah. not, not many people can wear that. But because she's so contoured, so eye makeup, lashes, and just so done, it works with her. But the average person doesn't wear that much makeup to have the nude work. So I'm really drawn to peaches and peachy nudes. But yeah. on some people, they can still wash them out without the edging. So that's why I love using just a little bit of an overdraw, smudging it in a little bit, like just that slightly deeper lip liner can really make a difference. It looks great. And another thing that you taught me, like this is like now I'm walking through everything you've ever taught me, which I still do and I still love. They've been the best cheat codes, is you first introduced me to the concept of brushing my eyebrows up. Oh, I and think that. A little bit of colour just here in the 11th and not too much like filling in and block colouring and stuff. And that makes such a difference. It's such a youth giving. It uh, lives. Yeah. 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 I and think. If I'm a bit late for my Botox, that's a good drink. <laughs> I think with brows, people, they brush to the side a lot. And so it's kind of flattening the, the, the length. And you, you, you don't want to bring your eyebrows like, down you want to lift them up you know almost for some people take away some of their forehead size even I mean my forehead's huge so I brush my eyebrows up every single day I even work out and brush them up before I go and work out because I know it just looks better um but I think yeah brushing upwards gives the illusion because the hairs are doing that so when you're looking at someone your eye line naturally just lifts and goes upwards like that don't brush them to the side and make them look thinner and also mm -hmm. I uh, haven't got a pencil on I me, mean, but get that pencil trick and put a pencil there on the edge of the nostril up and see if your brow is actually there because a lot of brows actually start too far out. And yeah. just bring those couple of hair strokes in. I love the Anastasia Beverly Hills brow whiz because it's a very, very pinpoint thin tip so you can get the hair-like strokes. Just yeah. put your hair-like strokes in the middle, bring it into that line, and it does lift and it really shapes the entire eye. So many brows I see, they're kind of – naturally starting too far out I feel so then you don't have that, that. is a great tip yeah I and absolutely love sure. those tips now I want to talk about trends because you know we've just been swept by Taylor mania and yeah. I think it's going to take everyone a while to recover but I I think the red lip I mean the red lip never really goes out of style but the Taylor red yeah. that, that iconic like perfectly applied red with a clean face and just a very simple flicky eye that's going to be huge this year isn't it it's just going to like it's here 
it's funny that since the Taylor mania and, you know, the hysteria of it all, it's been quite amazing over the last few weeks, seeing from Melbourne to Sydney and just everything that's been going on with her and the Super Bowl and everything. Um, there's been so many old clips of her being played. Like I saw uh, the Today Show, they, they they played a clip when she performed on their show like years ago. I think it was Fitzy and Whipper from Nova. They yeah. played a clip where, where she came on and I was like, she's been doing this red lip and tiny little wing for years. It's, it's not so much new. It's like, it's like her signature. But I feel like just lately it's almost come back and she's really rebrought it. And I think the tone of red like you said that classic red it's that blue base red there's so many reds now like when i was growing up my grandmother whether she was just sitting on the couch watching days of our lives or going out she'd always have the red lip on even in her own home by herself you know it's pretty insane those older generations had so much elegance in a way and her red was just that blue base red blue base red you couldn't even really get many other reds back then it was just that classic red now we have so many different undertones to change the reds you know but the, you, you can't beat that classic blue base red and i just i want ruby woo to the concert because to me yeah. like that just it and also it comes off quite matte so it has that you know stage makeup the yeah. effect like and also the pain power yeah Yes, yes. And so it was funny because Lily and I were getting ready to go and we both went for exactly the same I look. And I thought, Isn't it funny? Because a red lip instantly gives you a, a couple of things for me. It, it always feels powerful. Mm. Uh, it always feels like you're dressed. If you put your red lip on, you mean business, like you're here to slay. And then the other thing that to me a red lip means is that you're feeling brave because if you don't want to be seen, you don't wear your red lipstick. And so I feel like that undercurrent, that subversive kind of that messaging of we mean business, we feel confident enough to rock our red. And, you know, there's a, a return to polish, not so much this clean girl aesthetic where, you know, it was almost apologetic. I'm not wearing any makeup. I don't want you to think I'm wearing any makeup. It's like, damn, I'm wearing makeup. And you know, if you leave with my own devices too long, I'm going to go to the other trend, which is mob wife. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the good thing about a, a good red lip is, though, you can go to work or do day activities and have that clean girl look, that just a nice little, you know, very lightly stenciled top or bronze eye, very nude skin, brush up brows, hardly any mascara even, like it's, you know, that nude, and then put a red lip on and, it just changes the whole appearance. And even now, my grand did it for years, but now we are really into using things multi-purposely. So if you even just dab the tiniest bit of red lip on the cheek even, lipstick as blush has become a brand new thing. I mean, it's not brand new. It's been around for years, but people are doing it again more. So if you are in that clean girl look, very nude and you're going out, red lipstick, put a bit on, like a touch more here, Done. Like you, you got a whole look at the run lipstick. I love that look. The mob wife is great. I love this the real almost smudgy, messy eyeliner smudged in. Like I love that look. I've always loved that look. It's a bit grungy as well, but you can make yeah. it glam, you know, like that nice smudge in and glam. There's so many pencils now that allow you to do a beautiful line and then just get a little brush, buff it, smudge it. And then normally most of them after a minute or two, they kind of set. Um, the Huda Beauty ones do, the MAC ones do that I've got in my kit. Uh, Rare Beauty, I actually love Rare Beauty from Selena Gomez. Her pencils are very soft, so you can get a beautiful, like, smokiness. Just buff the edges in, but they do set, so I love that. And it's kind of like undone but done. You know, a wing is very done to me. It's like, okay, you've you've chosen to be polished that day and look elegant, but a smudged in eyeliner is kind of like, am I polished or am I just waking up and going again? You know, I love it. <laughs> When we were talking about the red lip, the thing that I forgot to ask you is, like a blue base, a blue based red is not the right tone for every type of skin tone. Mm -hmm. So, um, do you have a, a rule of thumb that you know can help us find the red that suits us the most? Because, you know, copying someone else's look doesn't necessarily get the best outcome, but getting inspiration from uh, someone else's look. Yeah. Uh, and then modifying it to suit us, that's, you know, that's a better way to go. Yeah. I mean, when I was first trained in makeup, obviously it was years ago, as I mentioned earlier, um, 
God, that would have been year 2000, actually, I think it was, or maybe 1999, year 2000, I got trained in makeup, but also being a dancer, Red Lips was part of my teenage years because we did shows and stage and ballet. You don't wear anything else on stage but a red lip. So I was very used to applying the reds and using reds. They were all blue-based. And when I was first trained, I was told a blue base can suit any skin tone from Nicole Kidman, pale white to medium to olive. And, I, and, I, and it kind of did, but now we have different variations. You do realise that some people just suit different um, tones. Now, I always use the vein technique on the back of the hand and I've got blue undertones in my veins here because I'm very pink base, very uh, pale, fair skin, burn easily, but a pink pink undertone is what I have here. Whereas you yeah. probably have more of a green undertone in your yeah. veins here because of the warmness and some of the olive tones that you have. Yeah. So the green and the warmness of your skin, that's why blue base reds look fantastic and, and slightly better, I would say, on someone with your skin tone than someone like mine. The blue base, because it's cool, is going on an already cool, pale, blue undertone skin. So it's complementary. And it will still look good, but it won't go wow. So an orange-based red actually looks better on skin tones like myself that have that coolness in them and the slightly pink because the orange base is um, counteracting the pink. So it kind of warms your skin up to give that summery effect, whereas your skin's already got warmness to it. It's kind of making it cooler and contrasting. So I, I prefer the contrast effects, yeah. Do you know what? It's so funny because I always go for corally red or a tomato red um, and I'm always having to push myself to go more to a blue base red. Um, but I'm going to play with that because I quite loved wearing my Ruby Woo the other day. I thought, okay, yeah. this is fun. And it, and it looked different on me to what I normally wear, which is a more, you know, bright, um, vibrant uh corally undertone orangey also red. sometimes you can play with your with your lip liners too like i've often put a more blue like a blue base red lip liner on as a base but put yeah. the orange base in the middle of it so it still has that deeper slightly you know iconic red around the edges but the brighter orange base in the center so you can kind of play with colors now a lot more i'd say than years ago but it's like the opposites attract thing you know when you've got blue eyes the best eyeshadows are really rich terracotta, warm desert tones, browns, you know, because it's so contrasting from blue. Um, and then green eyes, you can wear the same, but coppers and um, uh, coppers and like violets and purples look better. Brown eyes actually look great with colour around them, but not many are confident using colours around the eyes. That's why they still go for browns. But I just said brown and cream eyeshadow on brown eyes look very flat and boring compared to a beautiful bronzy, coppery uh, shadow. So opposites attract, and that's why I think lips are the same. So if you are feeling really pale and fair and, and have a cooler skin tone and undertone, maybe try the warm summery one and see how you feel. I think it will amp it up. You know, when we spoke earlier, we were talking about how most women will only have one or two instances where they have a professional person look at their skin and make recommendations about what makeup they should use. So in the event that, you know, where someone who's listening to this doesn't get the opportunity to do that, what are some things that you think are great ways that we can self-manage to up date the way we wear and find makeup for ourselves what is mm -hmm. you know a few style rights to break that you recommend breaking um, to update your makeup game I think a lot of women that I've spoken to and seen I've often just helped out friends as well and you know they've really struggled with well they think they're struggling with makeup and they often say look do you have even just a couple of hours even having a couple of girlfriends around to make it more of an event for you, some champagne, we'll go through our makeup bags and see what you think. And I go, actually, the, the products you've got are very good. They're, there's nothing wrong with your product. You're just using it incorrectly. So back in the day, we were taught to powder the whole face. You know, my, my grandma used to have a big powder puff and go, boof, 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 there was powder <laughs> everywhere. And now I use the smallest little brush for powder. Like, I mean, sometimes I use bigger depending on the job, but most of the time it's only about that big. And I just powder in little tiny areas and think, okay, don't want any light there, don't want any light there, don't want any light, you know, 
just still using the same powder you've already got, but in a very different way. And I think even foundation, you don't have to cover the whole face. You don't yeah. have to use lip on the whole, uh, sorry, um, lip gloss on the whole lip. It's in the centre only, powder there only, um, you know, things like that. So maybe you've got the right products using way too much of it and a bit of an older school technique of like, this says for skin, I'm putting it on the whole skin. Maybe try something different, you know. But things like brushing the brows up, regardless if it's pencil in it or not, if you have an eyeliner, rather than having it so bold and blunt, try smudging it a bit because that can also be an eyeshadow for you. So rather than just trying an eyeshadow and having fallout and difficulty with it, just try smudging a beautiful eyeliner. That can be just beautiful just by itself. Smudge it, um, you know, apply it, small little brush and feather it up. Um, the embracing blush, I think blush is just so beautiful at the moment. Uh, we're seeing a lot more blush than bronzers and uh, more creamy products too. Sometimes powders can be really stuck on the face, you know, it can really look quite placed, whereas creams can be really, you know, blendable and just kind of seamlessly applied to the skin that you don't really know what someone's done. You're like, are you wearing blush or bronzer? Are you going to highlight? I don't know. It's, it's, it's all kind of creamy. But if you do use creams, then the powder might have to be used just to kind of have that highlight and shade. So I think change textures, but know your skin texture as well. If your skin's really large pores and very porous and textured, don't go for the real glowy, glowy, glowy makeups because it's going to show it off. Go for more matte. So I think understanding what your skin is telling you, um, blending a bit more, uh, less application in some parts like powder, for example, and that can modernise your makeup look. And what about contouring and highlighting? Is that as prominent or do you think that's a little bit a dated technique? The, the real full-on contour, I think, is definitely not as big anymore. I'm so happy walking around, you know, like I live in Sydney, so I walk around and, you know, for a while there, I was seeing a lot of muddy faces. I'd walk through the shops or walk through the city and I'm like, oh, she's over contour because, you know, their bathroom light could be beautiful, warm lighting or their bedroom. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I go into daylight and it's like, whoa, you can really see that. I think we're really doing less of the strong contouring. Uh, contouring. Also, products are better. Like for me, I use the Westman Atelier because it, they, they literally just blend. Like you can never stuff that up. It can look quite dark, but you can use a brush or your fingers or a little um, a beauty bit of a sponge to really smooth it out. I would say more highlighting is if you highlight your face, you kind of don't need the contour, you know what I mean? Like highlight, yeah. brighten and lift. Like I actually highlight here now a lot. I put a lot of highlighting concealers in those areas. So and that's that, where the just below the cheekbone. Yeah, and that kind of brings that out. And then if you highlight on top, it's bringing that out, that concaves naturally. Because I'd rather do highlight and highlight than brown, 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 a really strong contour, which can be aging and looking a bit muddy and tan, you know, that, that over tanned look. So think about- what are, when, you're, sorry, when you're adding the highlight, again, there seems to be so many products available and so many textures available and so many colors available. Yeah. How do we choose the right color, the right texture, uh, the right formula for, for the highlighting part because I agree it's much more flattering and when you know when you're it catches the light it can, it can look really youthful and beautiful it's more anti-aging yeah yeah so how do we choose like in your opinion what are some great go-to formulas that you can't stuff up if you're not a makeup artist that's you know pretty easy to get right yeah, and when I say highlight, I don't mean the finish, like, you know, the makeup kind of finisher, which is like a yeah, bit of a, a, a shimmer or a bit of a actual yeah, Bobby Brown actual, shimmer bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lighter product that's got a bit of a reflex through it. That's not what I'm talking about. It's more like the highlight and shade of the face. So when I do someone's foundation, I, you know, put it on where I think I need it. If they've got really dark circles, I'd use a darker shade, peachy, orangey shade to correct, and then I brighten with a lighter shade. So I'm talking using more like concealers, um, or I still use the YSL Tushy Club. It's been yeah. around for years. It was an iconic product. I don't know what it is now, but when I was at the L'Oreal Group, it was one sold every second for a while there. I'm not sure what it does now, but it's still a very iconic, you know, the pen, and you can easily just put couple of stripes there, a couple of stripes here, stripe down the centre, stripe through there and buff it out. That's highlighting because you're accentuating that area, that area and that area. So just to remind anyone who's listening, highlighting is to accentuate an area. Yeah. So it's where you want it to come forward. 
You yes. don't highlight things that you want to re receive. So yeah. and then not that I work. A few years ago, everyone was doing the contour and less highlighting. So everyone was shading so much and making these cheekbones look great in a way, but only in certain lighting. And I think that's the problem. They were going out to natural daylight, which is so visible. And there was a lot of brown cheeks and really muddy looking cheeks. And I think just use a really soft, creamy contour if you need to, because it can help. But I would like to see people using... Um, uh, brightening concealers and highlighting concealers a bit more and using them in areas to bring that out, bring that out, bring that out, bring that out. And then the bone structure is all highlighted and shaded anyway. Do you have a, a go-to range of concealers that you think, you know, are idiot proof? <laughs> For, for coverage, uh, it's been in my kit for such a long time and I, I try and bring new ones in and everyone goes, try these, it's amazing. Like everyone was raving about Tarte Shape Tape and now I must admit they do have different formulas now. There's an anti-aging one, there's a hydrating one, there's the full coverage one. Uh, you know, they've got different versions now, but you can't go past It Cosmetics Bye Bye Under Eye Concealer. Oh. If someone's got like actual dark circles or actual pigment or whatever, it is so like I use the tiniest amount. It's like, so I'm much I've it. never used a product that's got more pigment in it than oh. that. It's like it's a forever tube. You're talking about the tube one, right? A little black tube. You have a silver, and yes. it's like it's it, like I use such minuscule amount, but it covers. It's got vitamin E, hyaluronic acid, so it's actually moisturizing the skin. It doesn't creep up. It doesn't dry and crease. It really is good for under eyes and for skin. So for any correction coverage, I always use under eye because it is a bit more semi-matte and that's what you want for correction. The glowy ones aren't correcting. They're just more for uh, flattering and highlighting. But what I do at the moment, my little technique at the moment is seeing someone's under eye, getting the right shades, obviously. Bye bye under eye, always first. Correct, correct, correct. Right, uh, you know, look really, you know, clean and fabulous. If there's any spots or pigmentation, use it on the skin. And then the Rare Beauty Concealer, I'm actually loving it because it's a brightening concealer. So it's not as opaque, it's not very matte, it's quite fresh and radiant, a lot of radiance through it. And then I go over that area where I want to highlight and bring forward and bring out areas to really highlight the face. And if you highlight the face, you are contouring it away as well because you're creating shadows by highlighting certain areas. Is there anything that you think we should steer clear of that, you know, we've become dependent on over the past four or five years that you you actually think is a makeup trend you'd like to see the back of? Hard to say a trend. I just think uh, like the really the really drawn in brows. I'm just not a fan. I think. The brow category, as you mentioned, I think in the very beginning of the pod, you know, the brow category has grown so much. When I was around in my early days, just a pencil. Now there's a pencil, a wax, a pomade, a powder, a gel. Uh, it, it, this is so much. And I think people just get excited and buy all these things and they just really over feather and over draw and the heavy brow, yes, you want to have that frame. I love, love, I can't do a makeup with that brow pencil or brow something. I love it. But you still got to have that feathery nature and that soft nature with the brow. You can't have it block. And even eyeliners. Um, a wing, like a beautiful wing is a bit different because it's more of a cat eye or that graphic type of eyeliner that's kind of in. But seeing someone get a pencil and just do that and just leave it, it mm, grinds my gears. And that's why I love the mob wife trend because it's there the iron is there quite heavily but it's buffed out at the edges if you buff the edges out it gives that softness to kind of look like an actual soft makeup eyeshadow look rather than a big blunt eyeliner i think eyes for me are things i just feel a bit softer is okay you don't have to be as heavy-handed we talked about blush before and i think the blush category like the brow category has exploded and i have got so many different blush products and i i actually credit blush with being one of those things that can take you from looking you know 108 years old to looking the age that you want to very very quickly yeah. i love that you said that we can use lipstick i love it when you give us permission to do things that we do anyway but are feeling a bit guilty about but lipstick I love that works a dream like sometimes especially now with some of the new textures of lips 
Um, like, you know how the velvet cloud lip trend got really big last year? So mm-hmm. many brands like Charlotte Tilbury has one, Fenty has one, Anastasia Beverly Hills just sent me their nude velvet lips. They're beautiful. Um, it's, it, it's, yeah, it, that, that velvety cloudy texture can actually go on the cheeks so beautifully. Some of the older lips that are very hard to blend, fair enough, maybe not, but these new, these new, liquidy ones are beautiful on the cheeks i use them all the time so definitely do that (laughs) and so and and then there's also all the liquid blushes that you were talking about rare beauty i think i've got just about every single color that from that brand in the liquid blush i find it so flattering it's buildable it's really really pretty um and then uh have you ever used the australian brand home beauty home on beauty oh um, yes yes i have i've tried a few of theirs yes 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 I I love, I that she was at hillary hillary is the name hillary, of the artist yeah. i love her um primer her like i when i use that primer people literally say to me oh you look so well what have you done it's such a beautiful corrective light yeah, well, actually primer. I must say her primer was the first brand that i saw i don't know i'm not saying it is but that i saw in terms of gifts that i get um the first primer that really did skin tones like from yes. like it's like a really pale up to the darkest skin tone and i think that's amazing because so many primers are really good but if you've got deeper skin or sometimes they're too bronzy and you can't use them for lighter skin same thing they, they don't go with all skin tones. This primer has so many different versions to suit your skin tone. So everyone can use that primer regardless of their skin tone, which I think is amazing. Tone is just just as important these days as type, skin type. So, yeah, it's great yes. to see. Yeah. But she's got some beautiful liquid blushes with a little bit of shimmer in them. So they, they act as a highlighter yes. and as a blush. And I love using those. I love them so much and i'll also wear them as eyeshadow as a liquid eyeshadow yeah. as well yeah i've uh, i've got the charlotte tilbury matte ones and I, and I often use them as an eyeshadow base that peachy one especially when i want to really bring out the eyes um peach eyeshadow that's powder sometimes can still look a bit flat even though it's peach but this um you know blush you just place on the lid and just really buff it out then put some eyeshadow on wow it's amazing all of it by itself even this is a quick fix but blush on the eyelids is very big makeup artists do it all the time. I love that. And is it okay to have the same tone on your lip, your cheeks, and your eyes? Is that is that a modern way of wearing makeup, or is the that same, like a little bit lazy? <laughs> the same tone, definitely, but intensity should be slightly different. You know, maybe think about the lip being the boldest of the of the three areas, and go, wow, that's my hero. And then yeah. soft, very soft here and very soft there. So it's tonal like tonal fashion was really in last year, like wearing all navy or all grey or, you know, all burgundy, whatever it was, tonal fashion was really big, definitely tonal makeup. But you still got to have that hero, like is it the eye that's the hero and then soft, soft, or is the lip that's the hero, then soft cheek, soft eye. I, I actually love a tonal makeup. I do it all the time. But definitely have your hero and slightly different intensities between the um the three or different finishes like often i might do you know the the really bold lip and it could have a gloss through it but matte here and matte there so you're playing of textures as well as the intensities which is really good too and in terms of um the other trend that i wanted to quickly touch on before we wrap up color seems to be back right color in eyes like um i know that last year um i think it was by terry launched black an incredible blue eyeliner and yeah. it seemed to just make every makeup look modern and gorgeous but when i kind of like i want to do it i so want to be that girl that's experimental and fun and then i went to do it and i was like oh, i don't to do it <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think <laughs> eyeliners the electric blues um the electric greens petrol greens even uh there's some lilacs out there lilacs hard because it doesn't it doesn't give you much definition so for me lilac would be something that i or like the the, the, the more pastel lighter colors i'd put actually in the inner rim of the eye so it's more like you've got your smoky browns on or your whatever you do normally but you might want to brighten it up and that inner part, the inner rim and waterline of the eye, you could put a, li- a liner in there with colour in it. And that's a great way to add, like, a touch of blue, touch of green, touch of something, but not on your actual eyelid. On the eyelid, yeah. it's quite a statement, and it can be quite, for some people, oh, that's a bit much, you know. Even though it's not really, 
It no. can be. So start it's the waterline the inside because you can still wear your bronze smoky eye that you wear all the time, but to add a bit of fun to it, try a colour in the waterline of the eye. That can be a great starting point for you. And then I went and got a, a box of Revlon coloured eyeliners because I thought, you know what, it's affordable. And yeah. secondly, I want to play with the different colours, but I didn't even think to put them in my waterline. I just thought, okay, I'll I'll put them just on the corner of my eye and smudge them out. But I'm going to try my waterline. I'm going to try the different yeah, colours. Water, waterline's a great starting point because it's it's kind of in the eye. So it's there, but it's not as visible. But also if you are using a colour for the first time, maybe don't use the colour on a bare skin tone, like bare skin. Yeah. Do your eye makeup as usual. Even use your normal eyeliner, whether it's a black, a grey or a, or, or, or a dark brown. Use that normally to get the depth and then use the colour on top. That will kind of, um, you know, lower the intensity a little bit and make it a bit softer for you rather than going blue on spare skin, which can be really bright. Even, you know, silvers and greys have kind of come back with this new metallic trend that's out. Um, and silver and grey can be hard to wear because there's not much depth there. But same thing, if you put it over your depth eyeshadow, like a brown or dark metallic or a dark grey or a black, it can it can still be that um, tone, but it's got depth behind it. So depth behind something is really good too. Have you tried any of the Victoria Beckham makeup products? Have Have you got your hands on it? I would love to, but I haven't. I mean, I haven't since uh, when Estee Lauder used to do all those collaborations. Yeah. With you know, they're I've the kept a couple of my palettes. Yeah, I mean, I've still got some in the in the back room. I've got a few palettes from that, but that was a long time ago. But I haven't tried anything new. No, I haven't. The reason I ask is. What I find really wonderful about her advertising uh, of the colours is that you kind of feel like if you're older and, you know, her age, it should be, I think we're the same age, or she's 49, I'm 50. And um, the way that she um, demonstrates these products and colours, you kind of feel brave enough to play with something new but she doesn't do an all over face of new. And I think in this conversation with you today, that's that's what I've got is that if we can try new things, but you don't have to do it all at once. No, no, <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I've said this for a long time in many other um, interviews I've done or just media that I've done, you know, people get so excited buying new palettes and buying new things. And Taylor's just probably a great example. Everyone kind of went out of their comfort zone a bit, which I love seeing all these cool makeups and glitters and uh, stick on diamantes and red lips. It was amazing. But sometimes maybe practice before the event. Like uh, don't think, oh, it's a, it's a costume party or a theme party or Taylor Swift or it's Mardi Gras or whatever it is you're going to or a big formal event. Don't do it just half an hour before you're about to leave the house. Like maybe get that palette and try it out a couple of times. So on the day of the big event that you're going to, you feel really confident. You know how to do it. You know how it works. Less stress. So there is a moment of practice. Like if I know I'm using something very new on a client, it's a big red carpet or a really big photo shoot, I do practice a bit before because you don't want to get there and be testing it on the shoot, wasting everyone's time, you know. So Practice makes perfect. Try it out before the big event. So, my just in summary of what we've talked about today, uh, a great concealer with some of the new modern formulations is is definitely worth investigating and investing in because it can also double up as your complexion product. So, if you add it just where you need it, you can get away probably with not using foundation oh, so yeah. I got that and and you like to work with a concealer that's also a color corrector am I right um more the more the primers are the color correct okay, sorry. Yes, so the primers you. that I use have different undertones like a yellow or a pink or different undertones but you know in the concealer category most of them now do have a lot of moisture in them because they're going around an eye area that you know it creases there's expression there so that's good but the true concealer trick is still something I really believe in. I always use a peachier, slightly warmer concealer on most of my clients first to correct because the darkness has to be corrected. You can't do that with a light colour. And then use a brightening concealer over the top, and that is really your duo of, of perfectness. You know, you can't get more spotlighted under eyes than that. And then the second tip, which you, we just touched on again, was a great primer can really, really enhance your complexion. And you were saying yellow is a nice safe bet 
on everyone. Yeah, the yellow works on everyone, for sure. Green yeah. will correct red. Yellow is glow giving to most complexions. Uh, I've played around with a pink all over. Uh, yeah, you know, um, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, Asian clients that I have. And when I was going to Asia a lot, the pink is amazing for them. Some of them complain about being a bit dull and a bit sallow. Um, yeah. So the yellow would be the worst one to use for them. But that pink just kind of almost brightens and lilac can be good too as well. So that, that's good for that. And really um, either either deeper skin tones, like some of my really darker skin tones that I work with or um, some Indian skins that I've worked with or really pigmented, uh, pigmentation skin, the orange. The orange before the pigmentation is really good too, yeah. And then the last thing that I picked up is with, color particularly if you want to play with color in the eyes you can start with your waterline yeah. rather than putting it on your lid yeah and i want to also sneak in highlighting because i think that that the way that you do highlighting is definitely definitely glow getting it's beautiful yeah. it's intentional highlighting use kind of concealer or a brightening concealer, like I use the Rare Beauty one a lot, or there's heaps of them around, even the YSL Tushy Clars I mentioned as well. Those more brightening concealers, once your skin's done, you can kind of go, hmm, and you think, well, if I bring that out, if I bring that out, if I pop that and pop that, then the eye socket will have the shading it needs, the cheekbone will have the shading it needs, the jawline will have the shading it needs, you know? So you don't have to use all this bronzing and contouring and brown sometimes muddy mess that it can be if you're not used to it but that's why i love that i find it easier than doing the contouring is is actually highlighting more yeah great well that was wonderful absolutely wonderful as always to talk to you i really miss you i wish you could come touch my face again i need i, know, I have to it's overdue well, i feel like you need to come and like go through my makeup with me and just we, we might do a bit of a cold because like here i get so many things and then I get excited about stuff and sometimes use things that aren't necessarily the best things for me. Yeah, so, no, we can do that. We can do that and we can film it. But, yes, thanks for having me. I love sharing tips. So, yeah, thank you for having me on, on my, my, my second time now. This is great. Oh, you can be on every week if you like. I mean, <laughs> you are my go-to expert when for anything colour. It's a pleasure speaking to you. And I always, like, truly, everything that you've ever taught me has stayed with me. And I have to be careful not to get stuck on it. So it's good to talk more regularly so that I still keep my Michael Brown techniques, but the evolved Michael Brown techniques. Like Otherwise, I'm three just... years in the industry and I'm still learning. I mean, yeah. From, from products to textures, new technologies, just TikTok trends these days. It's funny how I'm still learning, even though I've been doing it for 23 years. So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. That's it. Wonderful to see you. And yeah. I really, really love this conversation. I hope you did too. Thank you so much. I did.